right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. Today, we're gonna be working on the truck bed camp trailer that we've been working on for a while. I put it on hold for the last few weeks, if you've been following along. I did just restore this nitro bass boat, this old 99 nitro bass boat. If you didn't catch those videos, be sure to go to my homepage and check them out. It's the last two or three videos before this one. Uh, we completely restored this old nitro bass boat, ripped the carpet out, did the gel coat, the seats, everything, and it looks good. Today, we're jumping back on the trailer build. Now, I've been working on this for quite a while. I thought that I only had one or two things left to do to this thing, but actually, there's a few more things that I had on my list that I didn't do that I thought I, you know, I could get by with, and one of them is the stabilizer jacks on this thing. I completely forgot about those and I popped the tent open to climb in to, to check it because I'm wanting to take this out and film an adventure with it for you guys and it's just too wobbly. So this week we are going to try to mount this spare tire that I've got just kind of laying on top of the tent right now. I've got a bracket for it. We've got to do some fabrication to the front tongue. As you've probably seen in the opening of this video, the tongue is extremely light. I mean, I can pick this tongue up with one hand. Let me see if y'all can see me down here. Watch this. <laughs> and then and then it barely just wants to come back down. So we need a lot more tongue weight. We have basically zero tongue weight right now. It's barely just sitting on the front. So we're gonna mount that really heavy spare tire right up here in the front. I've gotta fabricate a way to get it up kinda high, get it away from the box so we can still use the box. I want to go ahead and figure out how we're gonna mount this propane tank, because I was gonna order one of those little five pound tanks, but I figured this thing's beefy enough, it's big enough, I think we'd get by with hauling a regular size propane tank for this rig. But it's been out in the backyard for a while. I know y'all haven't got to see it in a little bit, so I'll walk you around it real quick, show it to you, give you kind of an update of it. If you haven't seen it, if you're new to the channel, I'll open the tailgate and show it to you really quick. And then we're gonna start fabricating some stuff on the tongue. All right, I had to put the spare tire up here on the front of the tongue so that I can open the tailgate, but this is basically kind of how I want to do it. I want to, I've got this old scrap bar here. Uh, it's actually an old trailer tongue extension that I got from my dad and it's really thick. And I'm thinking we can cut it and have it coming right up here off the side. And then I picked up this spare tire mount off Amazon and I think we'll be able to use this mounted off the side of that pole and then we should be able to mount our spare right off of it. That should give us plenty of tongue weight right there. I think it I think it'll work. We got to do a little bit of fabricating to get it to work, but I think we can make it work. And really quick, for those of you who did follow the boat build, I didn't get to include this because I didn't see it until after I filmed the last video on this nitro, but check out the motor wrap. I found a company on eBay who specializes in these boat motor wraps and or you know decals pre-made. And I seen this color scheme and I contacted them and ordered it and they made it custom for this boat. That is awesome. I'll have them linked in the video description below. It's an eBay store that I found and they do really, really good work really nice high quality vinyl wraps and there's how the boat is looking i got the tournament this weekend i may film it for those of you that were interested in it and uh share it with you on the channel but i can't wait it'll be fun but anyway back to the build so here is how it looks right now the tent is mounted up on our billy bars rack uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this build i installed this heavy duty swing open bumper and the reason that I had to put that spare tire on the front is this bumper, when it opens up like that, it puts so much weight off the rear end of the trailer that if that tire wasn't up there, it would pop a wheelie right now, like big time. <laughs> but here's how it looks on the back. There's our wrap. I still haven't went and painted over the top of that or, or trimmed it so that it matches. I just hadn't had time. Let's open the tailgate. And there's our custom Billy Bar's tailgate cover. That thing is freaking awesome. We've got our ice code fridge drawer slides with all of our camping gear preloaded in here. You shut that and you got a pull out table on top or a fridge mount. And I've got their smaller one beside it. It's got the fridge slide on the top and 
I'm trying to do this by looking through the screen. Another thin, uh, kind of shallow drawer, but it fits some pretty good stuff in here. I just got a bunch of junk thrown in there right now because this build's kind of been on the back burner for a few weeks. Like I said, we started working on that nitro. I had to pull this thing out. I did hook up the solar. So I've got my, let's see if I can get you guys in here. I got my solar controller here. These are my wires. I just got them tied up, but they stretch out for I can hook up my solar panels. And I've got me a little 1100 watt inverter that I got off Amazon. And the Dakota lithium battery is behind this box up under the tonic cover. And oh yeah, there's the tonic cover. I don't know if y'all got to see that in the last video or not. Here's how it looks on the side. I added this little yak gadget bag that I had here. It's actually the designed to hang off the back of a kayak seat, but I had it and I figured it would go good right here, especially up under this awning when this awning's popped out. I went ahead and hung a fire extinguisher off the back since this is where we're gonna be cooking. Let's see, up in the front, like I mentioned earlier, this is where our propane bottle is gonna be, but this is not how it's gonna look, obviously. I'll make it look way better than that. I was just in the middle of mocking that up whenever I bought the nitro and kind of put it on the side burner. I got a box here and I've got some stuff in here that I purchased and I'm planning on wiring up some lights and some power ports on this trailer. And I'm gonna convert this old Pelican box or Apache box actually, this is a Harbor Freight Special but I'm wanting to mount it like right here since it's watertight. And I done it on that last trailer build I did a few years ago with you guys. And you open this up and there's buttons to control the lights on the trailer, power ports for charging cell phones and stuff like that. We're gonna wire that straight up. That's gonna be really cool. But yeah, it is time for me to start fabricating because I don't wanna have to put this project on the back burner anymore. I wanna get the uh, spare tire mounted the propane tank situated and then i haven't ordered the leveling jacks yet because i'm still not sure how i want to do it but they carry the ones that i think i'm going to use at harbor freight so hopefully i'll be able once we get the spare tire situated and the tank situated i can focus on how exactly i want to add my four corner stabilizer jacks to this thing and then we'll be ready to camp so the first thing i got to figure out is how high i want it and in order to figure that out, I've got to be able to get this tire in place. And I'm going to use my old Harbor Freight motorcycle jack that I've had forever. I actually use this for way more than just motorcycles. And I'm thinking we should be able to jack it up and get it kind of close to where I'm going to want it, where it'll look good, and do our measurements from there. I do want it kind of high up so that if, when I do put a lift on this thing, we'll be able to do a little bit of off-road, you know, not really dragging it off-road, but off, off the beaten path anyway, when we go camping. I'm also using a different mic, so I'm hoping that the audio turns out good this video. I'm not, when I work like this and I run a welder and a grinder, I don't like wearing my lavalier because I have to take it off in between all of those things because I don't want to damage the mic. So right now I've got a new boom mic on. Y'all let me know how the audio is in this video. If it works out good, it's going to be great because I won't have to wear that lavalier when I'm doing projects like this. So what do y'all think? I'm thinking somewhere right in there we can mount it up and we should still be able to, and it's, it's leaning right now, so, but I don't want it leaning. I want it kicked up just a little bit. But I'm thinking we should still be able to get to our box. I might even need to go that way some. The box still opens just fine. Let me back it down. I gotta find the exact sweet spot. This jack actually worked out to be just what we needed. What if I mounted it further in like that? A little bit higher. Since the tent opens this way, we don't have to worry about anything with the tent. We can go, we can go as high up as we want actually right here. That's not too bad. And I can still get to the frame of the trailer, which is one thing that I'm trying to keep in mind as I work on the front of this. When we do get to the point where I'm trying to fabricate the, I hope you guys can see me in that shot. Uh, when we do get to the point where I've got to fabricate these four corner jacks to be able to level this thing because it is extremely, I mean, I'm barely touching it. It's, the whole thing just bounces. 
So we've got to get the four corner jacks and I got to keep in mind where I'm going to tie into the frame. Putting this tire here still gives me plenty of access to that. I think it's going to add a good bit of tongue weight. We can still get around the vehicle pretty good. That's not a bad spot. I've also got to remember that I got to take into account the kickoff on this thing, which it shouldn't be too much. You think it's going to kick off really far, but the rim is actually going to eat up most of that kickoff. Let's stick it back in the back and just see how flush it's actually going to be. So when we mount this in here, I'll tell you what, I can work out here in this shop for hours without a camera on and that air compressor will not kick on. But as soon as I start filming, that air compressor is gonna kick on right in the middle of it. So I turned the tire around so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So this plate is gonna to mount to the bar that we're gonna weld up off the side of the trailer. And then this sticks in the spare tire slot and it's gonna to bolt to the back. So it's gonna be pretty close to flush. It's gonna give us a good, probably three or four inches off the tire, which is good. About two inches off the tire, which that's that's fine. That's going to tuck it up pretty close. So if the bar is welded to the outside of this, which is I think that's a three-inch bar, we're going to be we're going to be right out here with the tire somewhere if I if I go that route. So that should be fine. And then we can just go ahead and chop the bar down to the length we need and go from there. So I think that's going to work out pretty good. It's going to be simple. We should be able to just grind the uh, bed liner that we put on the frame off, weld up that bar, put this on here, then I'm going to bed line all of it to match, and then we'll be able to just mount this tire straight up to this tongue. Hopefully it's that simple. It is the next morning. I got a lot done yesterday. I wanted to show you the front spare tire mount. I've got it welded up. I actually ended up cutting the bar down the center and kind of making a slot out one side of it. There you can see a little bit better. It's not painted yet. That was just some black paint I put on there to keep it from rusting. Today I'm going to bedline everything, but you can see how I split it so I could get it a little bit closer and I've got the tire hanging off the side and it looks pretty good where it's at. I think it's out of the way and it kind of matches the whole kind of flow and design of the trailer that we got going here. I got these doors open, but I'm gonna have to shut them here in a minute because we're going to do some more cool stuff to this thing today. But I wanted to show you, hopefully you, I filmed and you got to see me just weld on these rear leveling jacks. Now I went to Harbor Freight and picked these up. I wanted to get all four. So I'm gonna have two more like this up front. They didn't have but two in stock. So I just got these and I'll end up adding the front two later on. But I'm gonna show you how I installed these and why I kind of installed them the way that I did. But first of all, you can see I can go up and down with the whole side for each corner. I'll be able to crank this and it's gonna raise and lower the corner of the truck bed. And we're gonna be able to dial it in no matter what the terrain is that I'm parked on. 
and we're going to be able to have a level with us and get this bed perfectly level so that for cooking and sleeping and you know just camping out of it's going to be awesome but now it makes it super sturdy i mean i can actually stand on top of this tailgate right now because it's supported on the corners right here the way i did it is i welded on this is a these are called weld on uh stabilizer jacks for trailers and what you do is you weld on this little coupling and then you put this on it you mark it on your shaft on the actual jack where you want to weld it and you weld it now the reason mine is welded at an angle is because my bumper is not vertical it's actually at an angle so i wanted this to stay straight so i welded on my coupling here and then when i mocked everything up i seen wherever it landed on this shaft and i welded it like that so once it's painted it's going to look good and it's going to be extremely custom i will say that so like i mentioned those corner jacks were not the only cool thing that i picked up for this build today I decided to go with some air shocks for this thing. I, I thought about doing, I wanted to lift it and I thought about doing the axle flip, but flipping the axle on these old two wheel drive Mazda trucks, it, it was just gonna be way too much lift. I think it, it, it was gonna end up being like five or six inches and then the ride was gonna be still really bouncy. What people don't understand about these trucks is once you cut them in half like this, the the springs the the combination of not having the the front half of the truck frame to keep everything square and steady and the bounciness of these old leaf springs they've got a lot of bounce to them and just by hitting one or two little potholes is going to make this thing just sway and sway and sway even with new shocks you know these springs are still going to throw it around because there's nothing rigid for this bed to be attached to you know even when i'm pulling it it's just attached by a ball on the back of my truck so anyway that being said i picked up some air shocks now i should be able to install these air shocks on you know right in place where these old shocks are going to be coming off and we're going to be able to air them up and get a little bit of a stiffer ride a little bit of a lift in the back and it's just going to be it should in theory be the best solution for what we got to do and for the price i mean i think you can get these air shocks for this truck for under 100 bucks right now and i picked them up we're going to run the lines it comes with the it's got a little kit where it should have little valve stems just like on a car tire that i'll be able to mount in a certain location and we'll be able to pop air into both shocks at the same time so they stay equal and we're going to hopefully be able to use these to raise and lower this truck bed and stiffen this ride and get it to where it looks a little bit better behind the tacoma going down the road and pulls a whole lot better so all right y'all the air shocks are on I went ahead and pulled around here to the backyard because we are gonna set this thing up like we're camping. It's too late in the day for me to actually go to up in the mountains to try it out, but I figured I'd pull back here. It's very unlevel, as you can hopefully see on camera. This is not level at all. And the main reason I wanted these corner jacks that we added was to be able to level our rig on any terrain that we're on. So I'm gonna throw a level on this thing. We're gonna throw the jacks on here and air it up. I mean, crank it up and the air suspension is awesome. I don't know if you guys can tell, but, and I'll walk you around in a minute and show you how I installed them, but I've got a little valve at the end of the rig now that I just pump 90 PSI in. It gets it to about that sweet spot for riding. Uh, it actually lifted it about three inches. So I think that's a good healthy ride height right there. It's smooth. I just took it down the highway. I'm really, really happy with it. So let me set everything up. I'll walk you guys around it and we're gonna climb in it and see how stable it is just by using these two jacks. Now, I am gonna add the other two eventually. I hate this wind's blowing right now. I hope it's not messing up the audio, but I am gonna add these two front corner jacks eventually. But for now, I wanna see how sturdy just these rear two that we built today are gonna do for us. For now, I've got my little shop level that I brought with me, but I am gonna mount me some of those uh, RV levels on the front and the sides and the back of this tent setup. That way I don't have to bring a level with me. It's always gonna be attached and then we can get it set up. And here's that Benny Hike air pump that we're gonna mount in this rig, which also will come in handy if we need to deflate or air up these rear shocks on the back of this trailer. We'll have a pump built into the rig for it. There's one side 
and I've already got them bed lined. They look really good. They are heavy. Here's the other side. And we got our two pins here. Pull that bottom pin. Go to that hole there. Start cranking. And these lift this trailer so easily. So the first thing I wanna do is just set this in the center and I'm gonna go for front to back and then we can do side to side. That bubble's dead center right there. Now, we're just gonna do side to side. So this corner needs to come way up. And that bubble is dead center and we are solid guys and uh, if you follow along with this build you remember me talking about how low this awning was because we didn't have these corner jacks now you can see this awning is going to be right above my head so if i wanted to go higher and we could go up higher especially once we add the other two jacks we can get this as high as uh, above our head as we wanted to just depending on how much room we got to go up with these legs but now we are locked in place we can set up camp, which really is very fast in this setup. I can't wait to camp out of this thing. Now that we got these leveling jacks, it's gonna be, camping is gonna be next on the list for this bad boy. Let's see how quick this tent will go up. I don't think I've opened this tent since the last video I filmed with you guys. My wife loves this tent. Just like that, the tent is up. I might end up putting a small lightweight shock or strut right here if I can get away with being able to fit it in there so that it holds this open. Cause I have noticed that this does wanna sway around a little bit, but once it touches the tailgate, it stays pretty locked in. I do regret not getting the uh, other bumper that swings the opposite direction. It does kind of defeat the purpose of having this open and usable when it's kind of in the way on this side, but it is what it is. I could potentially spin the tent and awning around and have it open up on the other side. But the way this awning is designed, it can only 270 or what is it? This is a 270, so it can only go one way. So the hinges have to be on the other side for it to open, if that makes sense to you guys. My wife has been super excited to take this setup out.
right. As the wind is still blowing and the sun is setting right over there. Y'all can kind of see, oh, you can definitely see the sun setting right there. So the shadows are gonna be kind of funky in this shot, but I wanna show you everything while the sun's still up. Here's the setup fully open. That spare tire is perfect right there where it's at. It's out of the way. And I was just thinking too, that we're gonna have this whole area here to haul firewood and stuff, you know, for campsites that you can't, you know, find firewood. It's always good to bring some with you. So we got that whole little area to stack up firewood. Those two corner posts that we put in make this thing solid as a rock. I climbed up in there, my wife just climbed up in there. This thing does not budge. I don't even know if we're gonna need the front two. However, we are still connected to the truck. So when I do wanna hook this thing up and, and unhook the truck, I am gonna want those front two. So I think I am still gonna install them. Here is basically how we're gonna have the setup when we camp with this thing. We got our little blackstone griddle here. It folds down, that usually goes in the back of the truck. And then back here, we're gonna have where we prep our food. I've already showed you the drawers today. We got our stuff where we pull that out. I am gonna mount us a cutting board on top of this one. So when we pull it out, we'll have a cutting board. And then right here, man, that wind is kicking. We're gonna use this as like kind of like the kitchen area. We've got this little pop-up sink. It can sit there. We've got this water jug where we can twist it and let the water come down right there. We can move this, you know, if we need to, but I think it's gonna be a good little spot for it. And we'll just kind of, this is gonna be kind of the kitchen area. We got the, our stove, our little cooking area, our sink. That's gonna work out really cool, I think. Now over here, I've got the lights wired up up under this 270. You, you probably won't be able to see them a whole lot. Yeah, you've seen them kick on there, but it's so bright right now with the sun setting right there that it's hard to really tell a difference. But it's got three of those built in. We got a light here, a light here, and then even this other one down here has got a built in LED light on it, which is pretty cool, I think. But this area is gonna be mainly where we camp. We've got us a little pop-up table, a couple of chairs, and this is gonna be the side where, like if we're camping on a lake or a river, this is where we'll sit to face the water. And the tent, you know, when we go to bed, it'll be facing the woods or, you know, whatever's behind the, the campsite. But this is basically how we're gonna have it set up. Now, it is a little saggy on the 270 awning, and that's because I've got the truck kind of parked at an angle and I can't pull this on further back to get it tight because the rooftop tent that's on my truck is in the way right now. But what do y'all think? That is really cool. Oh, I almost forgot to show you how I hooked up the air shocks. So back here on the back corner, I put, so right here's where we welded on the jacks today in today's video. But right here beside this one, I've got this little valve stem that I, and I've got a cap on it, but you unscrew that cap and you can pump air. I need to tighten that nut down, don't I? It spun when I try to take that cap off. But you pump air into there, just like a tire, and it will air up both of the shocks. And I'll attempt to show you how the shocks look in there, but there's one of the shocks right there. And the lines come out, they go to a T, and then they come over. My gimbal didn't like me doing that. Then they go over to this little, I gotta fix that. That's. I gotta tighten that up. I'm just wanting to turn the whole thing. But anyway, you put air in right there and you can raise and lower the lift on the back of this trailer. So guys, I think this thing is finally ready to go on its first adventure. Y'all stay tuned for that. The next video involving this trailer will be either in the woods or we're gonna go to a lake or a pond somewhere. I wanna take it for a couple of nights test it out, load it up with our gear and go camp in it. Even though we don't have the other two leveling jacks on there, I think we can camp out of it just like it is. We climbed in there and bounced around, jumped around. It stayed pretty solid. We are connected to the truck, but wherever we go, we're probably gonna stay connected to the truck for the first trip anyway. So y'all stay tuned for that. That video is gonna be coming very soon. I'm very anxious to test this out. We built it right here together from that old red Mazda pickup bed that we found off Facebook Marketplace and turned it into this. This is freaking awesome. I love this setup. Let me know what you think in the video comments below. If there's something that you see that you want, I should add that I haven't added yet, 
Let me know if there's something cool out there that I could do to this thing. Let me know. I love getting feedback from you guys and ideas from you guys. And stay tuned. We're going to go test this thing out. If you're new and this is the first video of mine that you've seen, make sure you go to my homepage and watch the full build process of this. We, I think this is the sixth or seventh video from the time that we found this thing on Facebook to to now, to us ready to go take it out and go camping and stuff. So stay tuned for that. Also today, before I popped this thing open, I didn't get it on camera, but I wanted to test to see if my yellow Hobie Pro Angler 14 would actually fit on the roof. My dog just tried to catch a bird uh, and it did. I got my Hobie Pro Angler strapped to the top of this trailer. It fit perfectly with no issues and I think that's the route I'm gonna go. So whenever I go solo camping in this thing on a lake or somewhere, you know, with water that I can fish, I'm gonna have the option to throw my Hobie Pro Angler 14 on the roof of this thing and just go set up by the lake and do some camping and fishing. So anyway, go check out those videos. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I upload every Monday at six o'clock and I'll catch you guys next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.